now the action starts. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Guilty of Trees at Eastside Tree Works. We've got a nice, thick, juicy one for you here if you wanna check this out. We're gonna be removing this big leaf maple. So this one's kind of a pain in the butt. You see it's really spread out over, well, over two yards. We're gonna be removing a fence panel in a minute, but it's a big, sprawly guy. We're gonna go up and just kind of dismantle it in pieces. You can see from the other side, not so, well actually you can see from right there, there's a bit of decay in the trunk. And you can see it even better from the other side. But this tree's kind of gotten too big for its spot. It's starting to get old. These, these big leaf maples, they don't, they don't last forever. We're here with Inbred Jed and the guys that are on the other side. We're gonna have the wheel loader. We're gonna truck the brush out front. We're gonna have a lot of fun today. It's pretty, it's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. It's one of the, the few sunny days that we get over here in Seattle. So I'm gonna put my gear on and we're just gonna get started and I think you're gonna like it. I get tons of questions about my gear. So I, I've been climbing on two different harnesses, um, a Buckingham Agility and this is my Petzl Sequoia. I really, really like, well I like both harnesses but I, I tend to go with this one because I really like how lightweight it is and it's easy to move around. The Agility I've been using has got really good support, really big padding. So probably, you know, maybe a good option for some bigger guys. Um, but this, I, I really like the Petzl Sequoia. This is the second one that I've had. And then these are Buckingham Titanium Spurs. I I did a whole video on the spurs. I don't need to talk about that much. You can check that out if you want. Hey, uh, Jed. Yeah. Uh, so Matt says that we got permission yeah. to either remove or rejuvenate this boxwood right here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So maybe like I don't know, 18, 20 inch stubs. Sounds good to me. Right? That's wonderful, man. Oh, I know. Yeah, there's a, there's a bush in our way on this side. We're gonna rejuvenate prune. It just means we're gonna cut it to, with a, you know some species like boxwoods and stuff, you can just like start them over. Same with laurels and stuff. So we'll just cut them to like 20 foot sticks and then it'll just grow back. It'll be a smaller bush. We call that rejuvenation pruning. Rather than removing it all the way to the ground, it'll, it'll come back pretty nice. So I'm just gonna go to the top, set up my rigging. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, you can see a nice crispy pocket of decay up here, like right in the middle of the tree. So lots of decay, rot setting in up here. So stuff like this is just nasty. It starts getting into the interior of the tree. There's really nothing you can do. I think these trees typically live like 80 years is a pretty old one. And um, they, they, they're, they're not, it's not like an oak or anything. These big leaf maples, they're not that, they're not that rare. They don't last that long. They're not that strong either, honestly. But yeah, you can see it's just like kind of falling apart right here in the center. Pretty nasty. Hey, can you move that saw, please? This is one of the nice things about single lining. You know, I don't have to tie into that skinny wood up there. I can just rub my line through the crotch and then clip it to this big fat stick right here. You know, so I'm tied in a little higher, but really I'm, this bigger chunk is what's holding me. So even if that fails, I've got this. Packing the winds off, bro. All right, bud. Yeah, so that's mostly boxwood, right? It's just that yeah, one that, spindly roadie at the end? Yeah, that's the roadie, yeah. On the right. Okay. Yeah, I'll just start cracking stuff off. <laughs> I'm off to a bad start. 
You sure you don't want to just stage a big pile, Jed? Well, I do, but you know how that goes. I just, I don't know that it really saves much time, you know? Uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, you're probably right. Okay. Man. Dude. Yeah, that's a disadvantage of the electric saw, man. It's hard to like power through stuff and slash it. You can always use a big kit saw. Yeah, maybe, you're right. Maybe this is a subpar. Huh? You got your 540? Yeah. Is it got well, a chain break? Yes, working <laughs> chain break on the 201. Dude, yeah, maybe a... Yeah. I'll take one of those, man. I think yeah, I like just those. threw my chain. Three days wood dull, mind you. And I didn't sharpen it today. I was like, nope, it's still good. <clears throat> Yep. All right. You know what? I've said a lot of bad things about the 201. Yes, and, now, and now look at me. So the only problem I've really had with the battery saw is sometimes there's a bit of a lack of power there. Um, so, you know, cutting limbs and stuff is really good, but sometimes you really want to barrel through because I want to sever this quickly so that the branch doesn't hinge and tip and hit the fence like the last two did. Thank God Jed put that plywood there. But, um, you know, I want to be able to sever the wood quickly so this thing just falls where it is. And I do have a hard time doing that with the, with the electric saw. I do the undercut to try to make it slash through a little bit better, but, um, you know, that doesn't always work. Sometimes it grabs on a little longer. So the best thing you can do is have a gas saw, just power through it. Make sure it's sharp. You'll see these should just fall straight down. This thing's really sharp, Jed. Yeah, I like that one. Do you, do you do that on the, the grinder or by hand? Pan. It feels nice. Look. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you can see some more of the decay right there from this angle. This side's easy, I'm just torquing it off. And uh, that side we're gonna have to lower stuff. Here's our, we got a cameraman, this is cameraman John. We got a new addition to the team. So, this video should be pretty sweet. We got like a full on cameraman. I think he's trying to sneak out of the frame. The man of mystery. Woo-wee! Yeah. Hey, the saw's pretty good, man. I know, and that's three days dull, man, I'm serious. Dude, I, I had two of them and they were really doggish. Yeah. The TCM got a lot better. Yeah. I just saw Davin roll up. He just dumped the truck. We're gonna get the loader out and start munching through this brush. This here is our new loader. We used to have a little bit of a smaller one and one without an articulating uh, tongue over there. I mean, uh, attachment this is the avant series it's pretty new i guess and we have the 755i i think that's the bigger one and uh geez this thing moves a lot of brush a lot of logs it does it fast and it's really smooth and i've come to really enjoy this thing and uh <laughs> it brings the process really 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 quick compared to just uh arming it like you've seen the guys making those piles all of those I probably could have gotten in like two, two grabs. 
and just gone with it. It's like super quick compared to the normal conventional way. Um, it's very important to get these greased every single time we use them because these things will be rotating, twisting, and just moving a heck of a lot. And when you don't grease it, that wears it out really quick, turns out, for this guy. And the diesel lasts forever. I think we've had a full tank for like three jobs. <laughs> I really like this thing. Making the whole tree smaller. Noisy for little, little gratitude to go a long way. Dang. Well, that's crunchy. So see, when, when we're assessing trees, you see this fracture right here? This is definitely suboptimal right here, but you see, it, it's split apart, but you still have the same amount of wood holding this tree upright. I'm tied into that thing. This is just kind of positioning me, so even if this breaks, not a, not a huge deal. Um, I, I probably wouldn't just tie in, I wouldn't tie into this by itself. But you know, these cracks are definitely bad, but they are better than if you see a crack going this way, you know, that's a lot more likely to break, you know, if it's going horizontally versus uh, latitudinally, I think is the word. Latitudinally, uh, you know what I'm saying, up and downy. So this is not good, but it's better than if you saw the cracks going like this. This thing's really light. Hopefully I can just check it over there. Looks like it's kind of tangled in the other one. Oh. Just cut that until it was a little jiggly. Look at that, very uh, little holding wood there. But I saw the top jiggle, so I pull my saw out. I'll try to do the rest by hand. Ah, oh, this sucks. I knew better. See, now it's just, see, because it's dead, it didn't hinge, it just broke. See, this kind of sucks now, it's just hung up in that. Cause it didn't hinge very long. If this were green wood, that would have worked well, but cause it was dead, see the, the hinge, because it was leaning this way, it just gave out. Now it's leaning in that, now it's really awkward. So now I have to sever it and muscle it. Now this is just severed, it's just resting there. Pretty lame. Now I gotta muscle it out. Uh. Uh. See, that didn't work. Hey, Jed! What do you think about putting the block here? You like that? So see, this is the open side out here. You know, I got a pretty luscious drop zone. Over there we got lots of, lots of knickknacks, trinkets, and little plants over there. So I'm gonna put a pulley right here and we're gonna swing all that junk over to this point and lower it down where it's nice and open and luscious. So if I just cut this thing out, then I would have to lower straight down and then the guys would be fumbling with the bushes and everything, you know, so. You know, I kind of got to think ahead a little bit, you know, by leaving this. That'll save a lot of worky sweat uh, stuff by doing it that way. Just a half inch ISC block. I use this for like 90% of my rigging. 
I really like this thing. It's just half inch. You know, we don't need a big rope for, we don't need a huge rope for this stuff. Half inch is good. And I try never to open this when I've got people below me, because if I drop this and it hits them in the head, that would seriously hurt. These ultra slings are really handy too. You just pick the nearest loop, run it through, and you're good to go. It's really awkward when you're level with your tie-in. Okay, I need somebody on the rope. Go over there. Yeah. All right. Swing over. Okay, so see there, like I severed all this wood and then, you know, on the back side and then the top. So a face cut would have worked well for directionally trying to get that thing to swing. But because I'm positioned really awkwardly, it was actually easier. You know, in my opinion, work positioning is like the most important thing when it comes to being safe, you know, to get on the other side and do a face cut would be really awkward for me. So by severing that wood first, now the piece wants to go this way because there's a rope on it and then severing the top wood on this side means that this corner is going to be the last to hold and you saw it peel over and go that way so that it worked functionally like a face cut but i didn't have to struggle to get on the other side to cut it without even any gloves. So I like using a steel core when I've got a big fat trunk to flip line up, but when I when I have to swing around a lot in the tree and do, you know, like, uh, you know, get, sometimes I gotta get clever with the work positioning. I like to just have a rope lanyard because it's a lot more malleable and it's a lot lighter weight, easier to work with, you know, if I have to do some funky stuff with the rope. But uh, if it's just like one stick and I'm chunking it down, I like I like the steel core. So I I like both. Yeah, I like notches and I like just peeling the branch too. You know, I think both work fine. 
If it's really critical, I'll usually do a notch, but you know, peeling it can really save a lot of time if you if you understand, you know, the last bit you cut is gonna be the side that holds on the longest, you know. You can actually do some pretty good manipulating that way. Got a twig? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So it's so just take the time and really make sure that your rope is consolidated and you don't it's not laying on sticks because if one of those grabs a stick it'll it'll seriously hurt you. Okay. So just take time and make sure the rope is nice and clean and that it's all behind you and not on top of any debris. Just make sure that the bag is behind you. Oh. Yeah, there you go, just like that. You basically, you want a straight shot from the bag to the tree. Okay. So if it grabs a stick in front of you, it'll jam in the porter wrap. And if it grabs a stick behind you, it'll smack into you. You good? Now he's down there running my rope and he's doing a good job. But pr pretty cool, so he found us from the YouTube videos. Nice! I told William over there that he looks like the hound from Game of Thrones, but just without the messed up face. He's like six foot four. And he misheard me. He heard with the messed up face. <laughs> Glad he didn't punch me. <laughs> to get that stub out of my way so it didn't snag any so it didn't snag any branches when I'm trying to lower the rest of it 
Yeah, if you leave those stubs there and then you're trying to lower branches, they always catch. So just get it out of the way and then you don't have to worry about it. You know, because I'm trying to swing that a pretty long distance. I don't want to be hitting obstacles. with me the rope runner pro it's my favorite mechanical device i've ever had So I was swinging everything this way, and now because these branches lean that way, I'm gonna start swinging them this way around the trunk. So now he's gonna give me the rigging line from this direction. So if I kept trying to swing it that way, these would break and they would go over my flip line. So I just switched directions, start swinging them all that way. You know, you can only rig so much, you have to work with the tree, you know, and these leaders are leaning that way, so I gotta swing this direction. A lot of, a lot of newer climbers, including myself when I started you know, rope management is a pretty tricky, you know, endeavor dealing with these ropes, making sure they're all going the right direction. But you get used to it. And then you forget how, how hard it was at the beginning. After this piece, and then I'll just chunk it down.
now I'm tied into just this, but I'm not pulling sideways on it, you know? So even though it's smaller, the tree can take a lot of weight going down this way when you're tying into it. It's when you get sideways and start pulling it that they don't like it so much. <laughs> I'm gonna cut a couple twigs. Oh wait, now I need a chainsaw. <laughs> uh, Can you just clip the saw into the rigging line and pull it up, please? I could probably do this whole piece, but you know, if I just do this one branch first, to reduce the weight on this. I don't want to put too much weight, too much force on that stem, you know, if I can help it. Nice job. Yeah, so I actually took that a little lower. Originally, I was gonna take it up a little higher. Um, I came down and I added weight, which makes this weaker. But what it gives me is, I was awkward, positioned really awkwardly up there. It was really tight and confined. So like I said, I think work positioning is super important, being comfortable where you are. Cause if something goes wrong, you wanna be able to get away quickly or move your body. If you're really tight and confined and you're trying to, you know, like muscle things and contort, you're way likely, way more likely to cut yourself or something to go wrong. So sometimes it's safer to go a little bit bigger and but you know, you're positioned more properly. So that's a little better. So I went a little bigger. And like I was saying, oh, that was dead. But you wanna make sure that when you're looking up, the branches aren't all tangled up together because if you cut one and it's pulling on the top one, it can cause the top one to snap. And that happened to me one time, a maple, just like this. I did that, cut a leader like this, tangled up in one above, a big branch broke out, took me in the head above me, and it knocked me out for a minute. You know, I was pretty dazed. Um, I, was, I was fine, it didn't really injure me, but it could have been way worse. So, you know, I'm always trying to look up to make sure that things aren't tangled up before I start taking it apart. It's just like a, a puzzle, you know, you gotta do it in a certain order. But yeah, I, I really think just being comfortable where you're positioned, I really think that's probably the most important thing when it comes to being safe in these trees. So I'm gonna take this top out, go over there, take that one out, and then now we're done. It's going pretty quick. <laughs> do a lot of work like that but uh, you know if I'm not moving around I'm just moving to the stem so it's probably fine but if I were really working a tree I wouldn't do it with that short of a gap or Up there. <laughs> it's like, what am I forgetting?
Okay, headache. I got a chunk. Hey, Jed. How low do you want me to take this thing? This side. Uh, a little bit lower, just in case it rolls and wants to cover that. That's so, so what do you think? Like, me take it down to like right there? I think you'll take it. Down like three feet below me. About my, where my foot is, yeah. just everything. My foot's about where that is, so just everything about yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. My 46 back there? You're probably good, huh? You reckon? Yeah, I do. Okay. You wanna Okay. Maybe that's leave it broken in it, Yeah, okay. You wanna you wanna eat lunch? Yeah, let's eat and then cut this off. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we're just gonna bust those panels out so we got a little more room. Fall that stick in the yard. Bad bing, bad boom. Almost done here. First, we're gonna we're gonna do some lunch first. There's a Jed's reason his nickname is Inbrand. <laughs> Jed's got almost like 4,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I'm like, how is that even possible? He hasn't even posted anything in years. Yeah, it's a good thing you're married right now. <laughs> Pretty soon. Yeah, right. You too famous? No, man. There's gonna be girls coming out the woodwork after yeah, you. Yeah, right. You're beating them off with a stick. Oh, yeah, girls love tree guys. <laughs> <laughs> My girl calls me her lumber snack. <laughs> <laughs> her lumber snack. I think lumber snack's like awesome name. If she calls you that, then I think it's only fitting that. Yeah, she loves it. <laughs> it's only fitting that we do too. <laughs> So, yeah. You're the second guy yeah. today that's uh, that's recognized us. We had somebody honking the horn driving out here. He's oh, yeah. like, hey, I watch the channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's super so, yeah. cool. So it's really, yeah, it's, it's neat to have you guys. I saw the drone up and everything, so. Yeah, yeah, John's yeah. flying the drone and. We're having some fun it, today. Yeah. And you were, you were doing your pose there. You were like right there cutting the last couple down and it was like that's right off the front of the video and it's like there he is yeah. <laughs> that's, that's perfect yeah. behind the scenes footage yeah, <laughs> so yeah it's just been great to it's great to meet you guys did your grandfather yeah, retire from warehouser or what no he it was called it was a company called hemp hill o'neill down in chehalis oh okay the coolest thing is is he had a dynamite permit so <laughs> we buy full boxes of the hercules what? dynamite and we go out in the woods and blow up stumps. He let me do it. You, know, the you just sit there with the battery. We're laying down yeah. on underneath this this trailer, and you just kind of like, boom, you know. And then it's quiet, and then it just starts raining. And it's like, really? <laughs> and the ground, you go over, and there's no stump. It's just like it looks like ground looks like you know, like fresh ground beef, right? Just little what? pellets, wow. just no sign of stump. It's just like biggest piece might be like baseball size. Really? Just obliterate. Jeez, where did he buy the where did he buy the dynamite? I don't know, but it was a lot easier to get back in the 70s. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the lady, this sweet old lady, the nicest woman, she's like rejuvenate rejuvenate the a rejuvenation prune is like cutting a shrub down lower. And so that's our version of a rejuvenation prune which is just cracking in half of the chainsaw. Now, this roadie, she's not worried about because it's leggy. So I can smash that, or I can smash the boxwood, and I don't know which one to smash. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna get back at it. Jed's gonna drop this stick in the yard, and we'll be out of here in no time, but I think Jed needs a little bit of music, so why don't you hit it, Jordan? Yeah. This is one of my favorite songs uh, called the Church Street Blues.
Well, I've been hanging out of town, oh, in that low down rain. Watching the time Charlie Friends is driving me insane. Well, up on the shady Charlotte Street, low, the green lights look red. I wish I was back home on the farm, load in my feather bed. Got myself a rocking chair, see if I can lose this thin dime, hard time, hell on Church Street Blues. I myself a paper friend and I read yesterday's news I folded up page 21 and stuck it in my shoes Gave me the gold to the poor, my good turn for the day Folded up my old bill and threw it far away And I got myself a rocking chair, see if I could lose this thin down Part time, hell on Church Street Blues Our strings, old black diamond brand. I'd string up this old Martin box and go and join some band. But I guess I'm gonna stay right here and pick and sing a while. Try to make me a little change and get you folks a smile. And I got myself a rocking chair, see if I could lose this thin dime. Hard time, hell on church street blue. You can see here why we removed the tree. It's got all sorts of nasty rottenness in it. You can see it's starting to hollow out right here in the center. And you can see all this wood is dead. You can see it's got some life on the on the sapwood, but all this, all this is starting to decay and to rot. You've got a big hollow cavity right here. You can stick my arm all the way in there, and it's full of uh, full of nasty dirt. So. I'm glad it was dirt, not raccoon poop that I just grabbed. But you can see it's it's nasty, and this is pretty common with big leaf maples. There, some people they, they look at it; it's got leaves. They think it's like an oak or something. It's really not that great of wood. You can see it's just spreading all over the place, all sorts of nastiness. Look at this is like straight up, straight up dirt on the inside of there. Yeah, you can you can see the different parts of the tree here. You can see it's starting to decay in the heartwood. This, you know, in your, your trees, they, they transport the nutrients on the outside right here in the sapwood. This is called symplasm. This is called apoplasm, you know, and, you know, and that's why you can see fruit trees can last. They can live so long and get so, so hollow because the trees just transporting nutrients on the very outside. The center isn't doing anything except adding stability, which is really important on a big tree. So you might have an apple tree, it's 90% hollow, it's still growing fruit, and that's fine because the apple tree doesn't weigh that much. But once you start getting decay in a really mature tree like this, you know, that's where, especially on a, a weak wooded species, you know, like big leaf maple or something, that's when it can be pretty unstable. So yeah, it, but that, that's why you see the discoloration because the different parts of the trees, they're performing different functions. This is transporting all the nutrients, this is just providing stability and you can see it's not doing it very well and trees they never they never they don't heal like we do once a part dies it, it's done so it's not like this is ever going to fill with good you know wood it's just going to continue to hollow out over time so yep this this tree had to go Do you have a squirrel right now? Yeah, we got a pet squirrel. <laughs> Judd's got a pet squirrel. Emma, large city nurse. Aggie, my eight-year-old, she's like, Dad, if I, you ever see a squirrel, don't don't kill it. <laughs> but bring it home and I'll nurse it back to health. I go, honey, they're not gonna make it. So next thing I know, Kent's like, do you want a bag or something? Cause he can see I got a squirrel's nest. So I lower it down 
it's freezing cold. Two of them died. We, we brought four home. No, three of them died. We got one. One saved out. Yeah. Yeah, and he runs around and gets peanuts from the girls and stuff like that. Really? Him, yeah. So now you got a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> John had a super good idea. He was saying maybe somewhere in the YouTube video, you know, we can answer some questions that people give in the comments. So I'll just read one of the more recent comments I have. Dura Taco on YouTube says, highly doubt you'll see this, but what helmets are y'all wearing and talking through? I own a tree business myself and I would love to know. I talked about that a little bit in one of the videos I did, removing that big dead uh, maple when it was really rainy, but I wear a fan or protos. It's, um, I like it because it's got a lot of integrated parts like the muffs and everything. And so it works really seamlessly with, uh, you know, my, my GoPro because it has the glasses that just drop down. And the headset I use is called a Pack Talk Bold. We used to use things called Cena's. Now we use Pack Talks because you can put more people on them. They're just a little bit better. I talked about it a little more in that video. Yeah, but I, I wear a fan or Protos. And then Jed wears the old style loggers hat. And why, what do you wear and why do you like that? These are really inexpensive and really light from all the major logging distributors out here on the West Coast. And they're aluminum, so they distribute heat really well. And you've got like airflow going 360 degrees around your head pretty much. So like days like today, super hot. And I just find that the German style, uh, while it's like tighter fitting, that's a detriment for me. I just want to have like air flowing around my scalp and my ears all the time. Plus in the, in the winter, this thing acts like as a bit of like a rain funnel off your rain gear. So, you know, you're gripped up tight on your rain gear, hopefully here. And then this like shoots all the rain off. They're light and inexpensive and they're ANSI yeah. and OSHA approved and everything, so. Yeah, my, my helmet gets really hot. I wish it were lighter. I've worn those. They're, they're really nice for all the reasons Jed's saying. It's just once you start mount, like I've got a bunch of stuff mounted to mine, like you can't as easily mount um, the Bluetooth communication and you know, cause of the muffs and everything. So just, just all the apparatus I have to have in the tree. I have that helmet and it's nice. It's all there and it's integrated, but yeah, that that's a good helmet too. So, so anyways, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Maybe we'll answer another question next time. So feel free to leave a comment, ask us a question, and we'll get to it in the next video. It was a good idea, John. Nice job, Jordan. Nice job. Like Friday? Yeah, I know. I really I appreciate know. you uh, <laughs> doing yeah. the songs. Yeah, you look over there. Yeah, be cool. Of course, I love doing it, man. Nice job on the machine, Devin. Yeah. You're really good at that. <laughs> good job on the ropes. Thanks, dude. My, my lumber snack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like that's going to stick now. I think so. I think it's good. <laughs> lumber snack. <laughs> yeah, good job, Jed. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Set it for the day. Yeah. That's it. That's okay. it, guys. That's it for this episode. Tune back in next week for another episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully, you like that. Everybody did really good today. It's been fun. Thanks for filming that, John. It's cool. It's cool having you on board. <laughs> so, I'll see you guys. <laughs>